Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. You may have just gotten done watching our video on partial sums of arithmetic series. Here we're doing the same idea, just with geometric series. We're going to find the sum of the first 13 terms for this expression here. Uh, so the idea is I'm finding the partial sum of the first 13 terms. So I would have to list all of these, right? So I have to say 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, plus 32, plus 64, and I have to keep track of how many terms I've even written down, right? That's just seven right there. Here's eight, and then I'd have to go to another nine. Here's nine, and then we've got 10 there. This is 11 terms. This would be 12 terms, and then this would be 13 terms, right? So then I'd have to add all of these up and do it by hand. I think there's got to be a better way than this. There actually is a better way than this. That's what we're here to show you. It's a little bit less intuitive than the partial sum formula for an arithmetic series. We're going to show you where the formula comes from and then just practice using it a few times with you so you get the hang of this. Um, if we were going to take the partial sum of the first so many terms of a geometric series. So first thing we would start with our first term and then think about in a geometric series what you're doing is you're always multiplying by r to get to the next term, that common ratio for your geometric series. So the next term is going to be r times the first one. Then you'd multiply by r again. You'd get the next term. So actually be times r times r to get the third term. You'd keep multiplying by r one more time every time you move to a new number in the series, right? And so by the time we get to the end, we've multiplied by r uh, n minus 1 times because I didn't multiply by r in the first one, right? So this is basically an expression for, uh, you know, the sum of n terms, the first n terms of a geometric series. So in our next line here, to develop the formula, what we'll do is take the original line, we'll multiply everything by r, right? So my first term is going to be r times a1, and then I'd get r squared times a1. You get a very similar line to the first one, it's just that all the powers of r are one larger because we multiplied everything by r. Um, I would still get to this point at some point in my list, but then I would go one past it because if you multiply this times r, you're going to get r to the n, not just r to the n minus 1. Okay, so what we'll then do to get the formula, we'll go ahead and subtract this new line from the first line. What you'll notice is that this term lines up with this term and subtracts, and this term lines up with this term as they subtract. So I'm subtracting this direction. This one minus this one's going to give me zero. This one minus this one's going to give me zero. We keep going down the list. This one minus this one gives me zero. I don't have one that zeroes out the last term. So I get the first term, and then I get the last term left over, and that equals this minus this. So we get this expression here, and then we simply factor out the common factor on both sides. So s sub n is common on the left, we'll factor that out. a sub 1 is common on the right, we factor that out, we get this expression. And then to solve for this and get a nice little formula, I go ahead and just divide by what's in parentheses here. And we get the formula for the partial sum of a geometric series, and that's the first term times 1 minus the common ratio to the n all over 1 minus that common ratio. That's our formula for the nth partial sum of a geometric series. Let's go ahead and look at finding the sum of the first 13 terms now using my formula. So the sum of the first 13 terms is going to be the first term, which is 1 in this case, times 1 minus r to the n What's my r here? Well, I'm repeatedly multiplying by 2. I'm doubling to get from 1 to the next, so my common ratio is 2. And if I want the first 13 terms, then that's 2 to the 13 there over 1 minus r, which is 1 minus 2. We'll go ahead and just type this into a calculator. It's a little bit shorter to deal with. Uh, 2 to the 13 is still pretty big. And we get an answer for this one of 8,191. Okay, let's look at another example here. I've got 128 minus 192 plus 288. So we have an alternating series going on here. We want to find the sum of the first eight terms. So the sum of the first eight terms, I'm going to need to know, I guess, my ratio for sure. I already know my A1. A1 is definitely 128. 
we can see that right there. So the question is, what am I multiplying by to get from this to this and from this to this? Remember, if it's geometric and you know for certain it's geometric, you can always take any term and divide it by the term before it and see what you get. So if you want to go ahead and take 288 and divide it by negative 192, that will give you what your ratio is. So we'll say R is equal to 288 divided by negative 192 and if you do that you'll end up seeing that our ratio is negative 3 halves. Alright so my sum for the first eight terms may a1 is 128 times the quantity 1 minus r to the n so 1 minus negative 3 halves to the n I want eight terms so n is 8 and then I go ahead and divide all that by 1 minus r. Now I already have a negative here, so it's actually going to be like 1 plus 3 halves. Go ahead and plug all that into our calculator. And we get an answer of negative 1,261 for this one. Okay, last example here. 3,072, 1,536, 768, 384, 192. We're adding all those up. It's a geometric series. If you can tell by looking at these, you might notice that we are getting half as big from one term to the next, and if you can't, that's fine. Just take terms, divide them by the term before it. You'll see that you get a half each time. 384 divided by 768 will give you a half. 192 divided by 384. So my ratio here is positive half. Uh, my first term, obviously, is 3072. And I want 10 terms, so my n is 10, so the sum of the first 10 terms is going to be 3,072 times 1 minus r to the n, which is 1 half to the 10, all over 1 minus r, in other words, 1 minus a half. If it helps you when you're plugging these into the calculator, if you want to go ahead and compute the bottom so you don't have to use quite as many parentheses, that might help a little bit. And for this one, we get an answer of 6,138. Okay, so that's your formula for the partial sum of a geometric series. A couple of practice examples. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.